Jesus. Wow, praise the Lord. What is fantastic to be in the presence of God. So wonderful. So glorious. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. How many of you can say we serve a mighty God? Yeah. Amen. I just love the word of God. You know the word of God says, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be glory, be power, and be honor forever and ever. Amen. How many of you can agree with that? Yes. How many can agree that our God yes. is mighty? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I get excited. You know, when we read the Word of God and it tells how glorious our God is, I get excited. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Woo! It stirs me up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just love the Word of God. No one can compare to our God. No one can compare. Amen. And I just love the words. You know, Isaiah 40 says this. Verse 25. To whom will you compare me? To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. How many of you have ever stood in the midst of a dark night and looked to the heavens and all you see is stars? Galaxies. Thousands and thousands of them. How many of you can say that's awesome? Beautiful. But you know the Word of God says? It says, who created them? Who created these? He who brings out the starry host one by one. One by one. And calls forth each one of them by name. Each one of them by name. Because of His great power and, <coughs> excuse me, and His mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Not one of them is missing. We serve a mighty God. Powerful God. Able to do all things. Nothing is impossible for our God. That's something to rejoice about. That's something to get excited about. Amazing God. Today I want to talk about prayer. And the answers to prayer. It starts off with us understanding what a mighty God we have. Powerful God. A God that there is no limits. There are no, there is nothing that will stop God from doing anything that He chooses to do. But prayers in the life of a Christian is critical. Absolutely critical. Can you imagine if we were born again, set free, and placed in a position where you're on your own? You're on your own. Find your own way. When you hit struggles, sort them out yourself. I guarantee you wouldn't have any Christians. Mm -hmm. Prayer is the access to those solutions. Yeah. Prayer is the access to having direction. Prayer is the ability to find the solutions to our own issues and problems and struggles in this world. So as a born-again believer, I really believe that we need to know what prayer is all about. We need to understand how God functions in answering prayers. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says this. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Because it's Amplified. <laughs> it says, do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, listen to this. In everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make 
specific requests known to God. <coughs> See, God wants us to pray. God wants us to, to get into a place where we actually link up with Him and ask Him questions. Ask Him about situations. Start communicating with God. And He invites us. Invites us. And it's not a case of, no, just come and, and, and talk. No, He actually says, bring your prayers and your specific petition. In other words, that which is very, very specific to achieve something very, very specific. See, God is not a God of the grain. And God doesn't want us to be a God of the grain. We've got to realize that as, as children of God, we've got to stop sitting on the fence. Stop sitting on the, on the place where, where we're wishy-washy. No, no, we, we gotta, we've got to be specific about what we want. We've got to be specific about where we're going. And God invites us to be specific. He invites us to bring our petition to God. So prayer is vital to the Christian. I'm reminded of a joke about Johnny. Johnny is a five-year-old, very intelligent little boy. And one day, and he, he, he's busy playing soccer and he hasn't got a buddy. So he goes to his, his dad and says, Dad, I want a baby brother. Now his dad, also being pretty, pretty cluey, says to his son, Johnny, if you pray for two months, I guarantee you, you're going to get a baby brother. Johnny's so excited. He heads off straight into his bedroom. And there he goes and starts praying. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to have a baby brother. Lord, I want a baby brother to play soccer with. And he starts praying. And for one whole month, Johnny is faithful, praying the prayer. But after a month, Johnny starts to think. And he starts to think and say, you know, this is... Pretty weird. Who's actually prayed for a baby brother and got him after two months? So he stops praying. Stops praying. Anyway, two months later, mum is off to hospital because she's giving birth. And she brings home a package. And Johnny walks in. And as she approaches dad, here's a little bundle of joy. And dad pulls back the blankets. And what? Not one, but two baby boys. And he says to Johnny, aren't you glad you prayed? And Johnny says, looks at him and says, yes, Dad, I'm glad. But aren't you glad that I stopped when I stopped? <laughs> <laughs> My brothers and sisters, prayer is needed in our Christian walk. Yeah. We need to be specific. We need to be really geared around prayer. Because I believe that God wants us to press in closer to Him, to know Him better, but also to have our prayers and needs met. How many of you have ever prayed for a miracle and seen that miracle take place? Yeah. Come on, show of hands. Amen. How many of you have prayed... For an answer and had God answer that, that prayer. Mm -hmm. Most of us have had it. And I'm, I'll be very surprised if, if anybody hasn't seen a miracle or had an answer. But I don't know about you. I have in my Christian walk, and, and that just over 30 years. I've seen some amazing stuff. And there's one thing that is so profound. That it's. It actually stirs within me. And that is how I found, and I'm sure you can agree with me, that new baby Christians, and I'm talking about, doesn't matter their age, whether they're born again as they, they're old in their the 80s, 90s, or if they're born again when they're very young, that God answers their prayers 
almost instantly. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, you might find a guy who's just born again, ask God for healing, and almost instantly they receive the healing. Or within 24 hours. But as we grow a little bit older or mature, and I like to use the word mature because it's not about age, we see sometimes our prayers are delayed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our prayers just take a little bit longer than we expect them to. What's the go with that? What's, what's the reason? What's, what's actually happening there? And that's what I want to discuss about this morning. We we are we are we've just we've just experienced a, a worship service that that brings the presence of God. Mm-hmm. We felt the presence of God. We've just read the word of God that tells us we serve an incredible God that is so powerful that even the very stars, the universe around us is all kept in place by his word. How come we have a delay in prayer? And don't ever, ever think this is, this is Satan against God. This is not Satan against God. My brothers and sisters, if we ever get to the place where we think Satan is, is in the same classification as, as God, we've lost it. Yeah. Listen, he's an angel. He was a created being. Satan is closer, could be possibly messed with Michael the archangel. Maybe. But after this, so many years of sinning and so many years, he's actually decreased. Okay. But when you come to God, we're talking a different level. We're talking somebody totally, totally different. We're talking about a creator. All powerful. All amazing. Magnificent in everything that he does. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says this. For all the promises of God in Him, in Jesus Christ, are yes and amen. All the promises are yes and amen through us. What the Word of God is actually saying here is that God hands out promises. He gives promises to men, to those who believe. And if we remain in Jesus Christ, those promises are yes and amen. Those promises are are something that God will perform. We serve a faithful God. A God that goes beyond the human condition. And because He invites us and He actually tells us that He, all the promises are yes and amen. We must believe it, that they are yes and amen. But he he finishes that word, that that sentence, in saying that it's through us. That it's through us. So God gives the promises. He says they are yes and amen. For His glory. But they actioned through us. See, God wants us to be in a position where we allow Him to work. Where we allow Him to touch the people around us. Where we allow Him to change our environment. Where we allow Him to fulfill what He set out to do. So God calls us. God calls us and says that the promises are yes and amen in Him. See, Sometimes we might have our prayers delayed. Sometimes we might find that we go through struggles a little bit longer than we should. But what is actually happening is God, in His sovereignty, is testing who we are. Mm -hmm. Testing who we are. Now God, in His sovereignty, He might choose uh, choose to say, well, I'm going to hold back on on a prayer, on an answer to a prayer, or a miracle. Or maybe He even gives you an option where there's two choices, or three choices. 
Say, for instance, you're traveling on a road and you say, which one should I go? And he says, well, you can go left or you can go right. And based on your choice, on our choices, God can see where our heart is. Do you know that miracles don't bring about a heart change? Only faith brings about a heart change. And you take the, the Israelites, and Stephen touched on it last week. The Israelites came out of Egypt with incredible power. Miracles that are mind-boggling. You know that today we look back over for thousands and thousands of years we look back at those miracles and we ponder, we ponder on the magnitude of those miracles. That they were so astounding that we actually think that it Maybe they were just a myth. Maybe they were just some figment of someone's image, some metaphor someone was trying to bring a story across. But my brother and sister, they were actual events. Whether it was the flies or whether it was the blood in the water or was the firstborn dead or boils or whatever the case is. This was the mighty hand of God moving. Miracle after miracle. The power of God demonstrated. Yeah, wow. To finally get the Israelites to leave Egypt. And it wasn't good enough for God just to leave it there. It wasn't good enough. Do you know that he had a pillar of fire by night? A pillar of fire. Now I've got a neighbor that sometimes... <laughs> switches on his porch light and it shines directly into our dining room. Hey. It blinds us. And my attitude is, mate, can you switch off that light? Seriously, it makes living unbearable. But can you imagine out in the middle of a desert having a a pillar of fire in the midst of a camp or on the side of the camp and you're trying to get some sleep <laughs> and you've got this thing blazing away like a major torch my brothers and sisters you're not going to say uh, can you get that guy to switch it off that's not what it's about no you're going to say mate that's our God. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's our God. Good. That's yeah. our God before yeah. us. That's yeah. our God behind us. Yeah. Why? Because God wanted to demonstrate mm -hmm. who He is. Yeah. And by day, a pillar of cloud. Now we all live in camps. Sometimes we get it a little bit hot up here. <laughs> And it's absolutely, totally welcome to go stand in the shade, under a tree or on a bit, just to get out of the heat, the direct shade, I mean the direct sun. And Jesus, will, God, in His mercy and His grace, gave the Israelites a, a cloud, a respite from the heat. Mm. Why? To demonstrate who He is. Yeah. and the amazing thing is that wasn't the end of it they got themselves right up against the Red Sea and God delivered them as well with mighty power they walked through that floor of that, that sea with a wall of water on the one side and a wall of water on the other side while the ground is totally dry mm. And it wasn't just 10 meters to go hop, skip and a jump when we threw. Mate, this was, this was a long distance. Now, I don't know exactly how long it is, but it certainly must have been more than 100 meters. And that's, that's a risk that they would have had to have run. They would have had to have trusted God. Mm -hmm. They would have had to have trusted God what He was doing. Demonstrating once again His power amazing thing is an 
and I, it, it blows my mind. Days later, after they crossed over, days later, well, it wasn't even months, Moses sends out 12 spies. 12 spies. And they, in their, in their spying, found out that this is the land of milk and honey. An incredible land. A land that gives fruit so big that you probably need a ute to carry it around. <laughs> it's just so full of abundance. Mm. The problem was that they had also found giants. They had found large armies in there. Mm. And they became scared. Two people out of the 12 believed God. That's 17%, my brothers and sisters. 17%. The other 83% of the population who are the representatives of, the, of the, um, the Israel nation failed to believe that God has got the power to deliver them. What happened to the miracles? Yes. What happened to the power? Do they just walk across the, 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 the Red Sea on dry land? What happened? Tell you what? Miracles do not bring about a heart change. Miracles don't bring about a heart change. Unless, and this is the key, listen to this, unless those who are looking for a miracle are hungry and thirsty for the heart of the one who gives the miracle. Yeah. Yes, amen. If you hunger and thirst after the one who gives the miracle, you will know his nature because that's the intention of God. Through everything that God does, he wants to reveal who he is. Yes. A new Christian, he gets his, his prayers answered immediately or at least very close to it. Why? Because he wants to lay foundations of who he really is. He is Jehovah Jireh, yes. our provider. Mm. He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Mm. Come on, we've got to believe it. And our God wants to declare that. Our God wants to proclaim that. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not prepared to leave a newborn believer hanging on the edge. But as we grow older, as we more mature in God, as we start to venture out there and the Word of God starts to develop us and mold us, God starts to check, where is your allegiance? Where are you attached to? Are you chasing after the signs and the wonders? And I just love what, what uh, Trent said earlier on. It's the heart of the... Of, or it's the heart of God that we should be chasing after. Yeah. It's the heart of God that we should be seeking out. Yeah. It's the heart of God that we should be longing for, searching for, thirsting for, hungering for. Because when we find it, we will become like Him. We will start to think like Him. We will start to talk like Him. We will start to walk like Him. And then the miracles will happen automatically. Yes. Yeah. You will see people's lives change so amazing and so, so incredible. Why? Because his heart is being revealed. God doesn't want us to be in competition with him. He doesn't want to give us the power to say, well, now you've got the power, so now you'll draw people after you. No, no. Jesus Christ is the one who died on the cross. He's the one who laid down his life. God the Father was the one who gave His only begotten Son yeah. so that we may live. Mm. Miracles are a response from God because of His love, because of His great nature. But it's the miracles of God that has the purpose of revealing His heart. But my brothers and sisters, the power of God, listen to this, the power of God lies 
in his nature and his character. That's the power of God. Not in him flexing his muscles. We must never get to a place where we think God is awesome because he has the power to kill, the power to remove life, the power to turn water into wine, the power to grow a leg. No, we must believe that God is powerful because he, in the face of adversity, our God is able to love. Our God is able to forgive. Our God is able to stretch out His hand of mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. The Word of God says that no matter how bad we were, how bad we were, we all fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But because of His great love, his great love. He gave up his life. He gave up his life. That's the power of God. Bill Johnson says these amazing words. We were not designed for unanswered prayers. We were not designed for them. But prayer is not my opportunity to have my way with God. Prayer is my response to His invitation. To come boldly into a throne room. There to have discourse that alters the course of my world today. It's my chance to partner with God and to tap into His heart. To co-labor with Him. And through prayer and help release His will and His will here on earth. That's what God has called us to do. To co-labor with God. To walk with Him. To allow Him to work through us. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, Let us therefore, let us therefore come boldly to the throne room of grace. That, listen to this, that we may obtain mercy and find grace. To help in our time of need. God gives the invitation to every believer. Whether born again new or whether born again old. He gives us the invitation. To come boldly into the throne room of grace. And there's two reasons why. Number one for mercy. What do we need mercy for? For our failures. When we struggle, when we, when we have difficulties in walking the walk, talking the talk, doing what we're called to do, God says, come boldly. I'll allow you in because I have lots of mercy. My mercy is renewed every, every day. But it doesn't end there. God then says, also you will find grace. Grace. But you know that grace... Is probably the most in, misinterpreted word in the Bible. Because we often consider grace as an opportunity for us to continue walking as we walk. Living the life. In other words, in the negative sense, in the negative sense, grace is there when we sin. But I don't believe that's the only reason why God gives us grace. Look around you. You see an amazing bunch of people. You see a church, clear ministry, that has got off and is now on a journey. Let me tell you, that's God's grace. That's God's grace. God's grace that has been stretched out towards a community and a city that God wants to change. So good. That God, God wants to revive. God wants to put his fingerprints all over it. Mm -hmm. And he will use every single one of you amazing people to do it. That's grace. Because not one of us deserve it. I can tell you something now. I don't have the ability to stand up here and be somebody. 
I'm only here because God has put me here. And God has chosen every single one of you Amen. to have a part of what He's doing. That's His grace. And He tells us, He invites us into the throne room of grace. He invites us in there to say, come, find your place. Find your place. Your place of grace. I'm going to ask the deacons to come up. Oh, the, the uh, band to come up. God wants to work through each one of us. He's called us by name. By name, He's called us. But His desire is to reveal Himself as an amazing God. As a God that is able to rescue. As a God that's able to deliver. As a God who's able to heal. As a God who is able to set free. And He wants us to walk in it. Walk in that manifestation of His grace, of His mercy. Matthew 13, verse 13 says this. Therefore, Jesus talking to the people. Therefore, I speak to them in parables. Because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts, listen to this, the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears have so are hard of hearing and their eyes have grown closed. That doesn't mean to say that all of a sudden they become deaf people and blind people. No, he's saying that their heart is no longer after the heart of God. No longer hunger, thirst. Jesus goes and reveals once again his character, his nature. Listen to this. He says, less, less. With their hearts and what? And turn. And turn. And then I would heal. My brothers and sisters, God is longing. He's drawing. He's pulling. He's pulling on every single one of us that our hearts may turn to Him, to walk with Him, with His nature, His character, His love, His mercy, His tenderness. Come boldly to that throne room of grace to find mercy when we find take hold of grace when we need it, that we may see heaven come down to earth. Prayer is a critical place of the believer, a critical part of the believer. It's our conduit to access the very heart of God, the very heart of God. I'm going to ask everybody to stand. God is here today. Every one of us has, has felt His presence. And I know God wants to touch every one of your lives. If you've got a sickness in your body, 